summers in Vancouver are always really, really beautiful and I really have been spending my time in the most fulfilling ways, like spending time with friends and working on creative things, also just working on my own passion projects. I've been spending a lot of time out in nature, especially with Mika, and some of my insanely talented friends even through a really intimate little concert and event. I've also been working with some dream brands of mine and the summer really has been such a dream. That is until... I have been sick with COVID for just about a week now. I think it's almost exactly a week since I caught it and ah, uh, I'm so done with being sick. I'm so done. I'm still definitely very congested. I'm not fevering anymore, which is really nice because that was truly the absolute worst. So at least I have that going for me. But other than that, like it's still been headaches and congestion and coughs and all that lovely stuff. So it's just been a tough time. I'm not gonna lie. Grabbing some cameras, but my head is starting to clear up a little bit today. So I thought I would try to vlog. I was supposed to actually have a meeting this morning. Well, actually, I was supposed to fly to Calgary today and tomorrow, and clearly I'm not in Calgary and I'm in my home because one, I'm still testing positive, so can't be giving this to other people. And two, I'm still not really feeling 100% whether or not I am testing positive or not. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna try to hop on remotely and just like participate as much as I can in these conversations. And literally the universe doesn't want me to be a part of this meeting because I woke up today and there is a power outage in my entire area, which is fun and dandy because it means I have no internet and I can't can't join on. Like they were supposed to have fixed it already by 10. It is now 10.30, it is not coming back on. And the best part about that is I'm still testing positive, so I can't leave the house and just go somewhere and get set up for this meeting. So what can you do? BC Hydro just keeps updating it and pushing the time further and further back, so I think it's time we get up on power. I'm starting to get hungry and I can't heat food up, so I think it's a DoorDash day, although there's not much that delivers to me. Your food is here. Came back on light we have light we have electricity i can make hot water i'm so happy <coughs> sometimes it really is just the little things in life you know like electricity is nice god damn that is so what a couple days it has been i'm actually really glad that i got the do matcha bar matcha when i did because they actually recently switched out their containers to like white containers which does still look really good with their branding but i personally am in love with this orange container so i'm glad i have this orange tin it's kind of special i'm gonna try this new cold matcha situation that i keep seeing on tiktok but essentially, they just whisk their matcha with their cold like milk 
beverage of their choice instead of with hot water and it's supposed to make it extra creamy. I don't know, we'll see. I feel like there's still too much milk in here. I feel like I could have done three scoops of matcha, maybe. But it's pretty delicious, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> what are you doing, silly bear? Ugh. butter chicken on my new sweatshirt that I just got because why wouldn't I? <sighs> Pray, please. Just let this be done with. I don't want to do this anymore, man. <coughs> oh my god. Excuse my dirty ass table, but your girl is free. You actually don't know how happy I am to see that single line, that healthy single line. I feel so good. <laughs> I don't feel 100%, but that line makes me feel so good. I never film in my bedroom, even though it's very nice and tranquil in here. Obviously, I designed it to be my little safe haven, but I thought I would share the space with you today while we talk about some books that I want to read, as well as the book that I'm currently reading. I made my shaken matcha latte again, of course. I'm pretty much addicted to this right now. It's just the perfect sort of like midday treat. I'll start with the books that I am currently reading maybe. So for July for my book club, we are reading Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. This has actually been on my TBR for ages. It is so, so good so far. It talks about a Chinese American girl whose family had immigrated to America to build a better life for them. So they don't come from privilege, but as all immigrant families do, they make it work. She develops a love for piano ever since she is young because both of her parents come from piano backgrounds and so they teach her she ends up being this absolute protege at piano, gets a full ride scholarship at a conservatory. So fast forward to her being an adult, she gets approached by this woman one day who has heard her play at the conservatory when she used to be there and she offers her a job at Holistic, which is this very high tech, very modern, very famous beauty and wellness clinic in the city. Of course she says yes, she needs to make ends meet, she needs to pay for rent as well as her parents rent, but the longer she works there, the more she realizes just how sinister the beauty industry, specifically holistic, can be. I'm about 80 pages in. I think honestly I'm gonna spend the rest of the day reading this book and just finishing it because I have really been enthralled in the story. The other book that I have been slowly reading over time is Women Who Run With The Wolves by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. 
I actually learned about this book through Summer, one of my closest friends, and then recently heard Madeline RG's podcast episode where she talks about how this book is really changing her life. This book is a mix of self-help, mythology, psychology, spiritual wellness, and womanhood. And the author really dives into what it means to be a woman in today's day and age, how we have really been gated in our abilities to tap into our feminine side. And she compares the free and ungated versions of us to wolves. And she calls this the wild woman archetype. I just know that there's going to be a lot of really deep and insightful lessons to be learned in here. I also actually got my very first aardvark book box. Aardvark is a book subscription service. Aardvark reached out to me and asked me if I wanted a book box and I'm never ever going to say no to books. These are the three books that came in this month's book box and Honestly, I want to say they have jumped right up my TBR and I really want to prioritize reading them. Also, the covers are absolutely beautiful on all three, but okay, let's go through them. I have Perfume and Pain by Anna Dorn. This book, both in its context and cover, is absolutely a brat girl summer book. Like this is what I will be reading while listening to Charlie XCX this summer while I'm on a beach. This is the vibe. But this book talks about a novelist, Astrid Dahl, who finds herself not working and not feeling motivated. So she picks back up on a Zoom writers group that she co-founded before she was published called Sapphic Scribes. Sorry about the lighting change, the sun literally just dropped behind the mountain, but she's just not feeling great. So she throws herself into distractions via beautiful women. However, one day an actress slash influencer, Kat Gold, reaches out to her and wants to create a adaptation for her previous novel. She sees this as an opportunity to really resurrect her career, but quickly as she's finding her pace and motivation and probably earning money again, she starts also feeling a ton of pressure and stress and turns to some vices that are really truly old friends for her, aka amphetamine, cigarettes, and alcohol. And those lead to both blackouts and also a string of very disturbing events. It sounds like feminine rage, it sounds creepy, aka it sounds right up my alley. Then I have Whoever You Are, Honey by Olivia Gatwood. Again, gorgeous, gorgeous cover. But this book and story is set in or on the Santa Cruz waterfront where every single house is beautiful, massive, and are these glass monoliths, except for this one bungalow in the area that's very quirky that belongs to Mitty and her elderly Bethel, who are obviously a very oddball pair. One day, a new couple moves next door, Sebastian and Lena. Lena and Mitty quickly develop a friendship, but the closer they get, the more they are both forced to face their past, as well as some urgent truths that could truly change everything. The little description on the front says, this book reads like a thriller, but it's also a searching and tender exploration of what it means to inhabit a female body. Like, come on. Aardvark actually picked these books out for me, and I'm really feeling like they are just my best friends because they understand <laughs> my reading taste so well. Okay, anyways, the last book is is The Eyes Are the Best Part by Monica Kim, another horror slash thriller book. The description in the cover says, Crying in H Mart meets my sister the serial killer in this feminist psychological horror about the making of a serial killer from a Korean American perspective. Way to check off the list about just things that I find super interesting, Anywho, it talks about Jiwon whose life starts to fall apart when her dad cheats on her mom. Her mom sooner or later gets a new boyfriend, but Jiwon absolutely hates this man and decides to use all of her anger and spite and hatred in 
ensuring that he cannot enter the family. Then it says, no matter how many victims accumulate around her campus or how many people she must deceive and manipulate, Jiwon's hunger and her rage deserves to be sated. There's also a review at the bottom here that says, at least once a year, a book hits the shelves that can be best described as absolutely unhinged. And the eyes are the best part by Monica Kim promises to be just that. Seriously though, Aardvark, whoever picked out these books for me, do you want to be friends? Do you want to just hang out? You clearly know me very, very well. I feel like the energy in this video was a little low. Sorry, I just have been trying to get back to 100%, but summer is not over yet and I have some really exciting projects and events and travels planned from pretty much now on until the end of summer. So I'm really excited to show you more of that on the vlog channel. I always worry that my life isn't interesting enough to vlog and that you won't find Find it interesting watching me in my day to day so it does really excite me when I have fun things going on and just things out of my daily routine that I can show you but I hope you're enjoying both the daily routine and the other things that are more like exceptions to the rule let me know if there's anything specific that you want to see in the next vlog but thank you so much for being here and supporting me i love 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 being able to share things with you and i couldn't be this creative of a person if it wasn't for you i couldn't do this as a job if it wasn't for you and yeah i just wouldn't be who i am today if it wasn't for you so thank you i love you i hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in the world and i'll see you in the next video bye